So in this short video, I'm going to take you through to the company portal. And in particular, I'm going to show you how to manage contractors through the company portal. The contractor module, first of all, provides you with a list of preferred suppliers for your property or properties. A contractor can be linked into your building's work orders, quotes, invoices, and preventative maintenance. The contractors you add in the company portal can be shared across all the buildings in your portfolio. However, building managers will not be able to make any edits or change any details uh, at the building level for any of the contractors that have been created through the company portal. To access the company portal, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you've got admin rights. Not all building managers will have admin rights, as admin rights are typically controlled by the account holders. But should you have access and admin rights, to access the company portal is quite simple. You simply go from, the, from this page here, which is your dashboard, you simply go to the three little dots associated next to your name. You select those three little dots and you'll see switch to company portal. You select that and switch to the portal. And from here, you'll see a dashboard, which is uh, typical of an account holder. From here, you'll be able to select contractors and you'll be able to see all of the contractors that have been created from within the company portal. Now, if you want to create a new contractor and assign or designate that contractor to your other buildings that you have, you'll need to first of all create it. So this particular view is showing contacts. So these are all the companies and all the contacts associated with those companies. So as you can see, this first one has two contacts. The next one has one contact and the third one in this case has two other contacts. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a company and we're going to create a contact within that company. So in order to do that, we're going to go to new contact. We're going to select it. And from here, we're going to type in the company name. So we'll put down our property checks and we'll put down our plumbing. under Roth's property checks. Now, there's some mandatory fields here. The, the mandatory fields that we, you need to fill in are pretty much the company email and the industry or category. So we put in a company email address. So it could, the company email address could be the same as the contacts email address. There's no problem with that. So what we'll do is we'll add the company email address, the industry. Now with industry, you select industry or category so we'll look for, let's just see if plumbing is here. Uh, there we are, we have plumbing, so we select it. Now, if you don't have the category uh, or the industry type, you can simply add that by selecting add a new category and typing it in and then selecting it. So in this case, we have plumbing, so we will use that. Once you've created the company, you can fill in any other details if you wish, it's no problem. Then you create the contact within the company. So you select add or the plus sign, either one of those will work. And we'll add a contact, we'll add Luigi, uh, contact number, that's mandatory, and a contractor's email. Uh, so we'll pick uh, Luigi there. Uh, and then you can set Luigi up as the, um, as the main contact if you wish. Um, and what we'll do that we'll do that. So we hit save at that point. So we've created the company and we've created a contact. If you scroll a little bit further down the page from here, we can add documents like a maintenance agreement or a contract of services that have been that are going to be provided for uh, the company uh, can be added in here. We can add insurances as well. So insurances will add one in just a second. And then once you've created all of that, then you can designate the building or allocate the building to that contractor. Uh, so it's very good to do this because it's, uh, you're, you're basically centrally managing the contractor and its insurances. So it, it minimizes any admin time that the building manager has to worry about whether you know, a particular company uh, or contractor has got their insurances up to date. Uh, by doing it this way, you, uh, someone else could be managing all of that. 
So let's add an insurance policy just for fun. So again, we add or hit the plus sign. We go in here, we type in the insurance name. So what we'll do is we'll put in uh, public liability, for example, and we can put a date, 2024. Uh, it'll ask you for an expiry date. So we select the little calendar. And what we'll do is we'll put the expiry date at the end of June. Uh, it's this particular policy is allocated to plumbing Oz property checks. Uh, we can then add the policy in here, so that's already in. So we add current, this is a sample one. We put that in there and then we add that to the record for the contractor. So we have company, a contact, and now we have the insurance. Um, what we'll now do is designate uh, the contractor to a building now if you're only managing one building you're only going to see one building listed on here when we hit designate because it's going to ask you and and give you a list of buildings if you're managing uh, multiple buildings that which are all under your portfolio then you'll see all of those appearing on the list so what we're going to do is we're going to select the building and in this case it's going to be the summit apartments which is a, a demo building um, we select it, and you'll notice it's appeared under here, and then we can close that. So we've got, in summary, we've got company, a contact, and we can add more contacts if we need to. We've got the insurance, which is centrally managed, and we've got, it's designated or assigned to this particular building here. Once you're satisfied with all of that, don't forget you need to hit the save button, otherwise it's not going to save and you'll have to redo it again. So when we go back to contractors, we're going to see on here, plumbing, Oz Property Checks, Luigi, good name. Uh, we're going to see uh, the details in here as well. Uh, so these are the contact list. We're going to go and see companies and we'll see um, plumbing, Oz Property Checks is in here as well. That's the email address for the company email address, as, as opposed to if I click on contacts, you'll see that there's a contacts email address versus the company email address. So that's the difference between the two. Once you're satisfied with that, you've basically done, done your job there. Now what you can do is you can then go back to the building portal uh, or the and by doing that, you select back and on the three dots next to your name on the top right, you switch back to the building portal. That will take you back to what you're probably very familiar with, which is the dashboard for version four. Uh, and you'll see that there's, you know, the, the, no, the normal menus on the left hand side. And when you now go into contractors, you'll see in here that if I scroll down or search, I should see plumbing, Oz property checks in here. So that's the contact. If I go company, you'll see Oz property checks uh, plumbing, which is just here, plumbing Oz property checks, and you'll see that listed there. Now, a very important note uh, is as follows. I mentioned earlier that you can't edit, or the building manager cannot edit uh, the contractors that were created from uh, the company portal. So how do you know from this list what was created on the company portal versus what the building manager would have created at the building level from the building portal, which is what we're in right now? Well, it's very simple. You can see here, for example, that some, for example, antenna Oz property checks has a little link icon next to it. That signifies that the building was created under the company portal. So that means that if I select this, let's just say that I wanted to add another contact within uh, this particular contractor. I actually can't do it because this one here was created under the company portal. So I would either have to go back to the company portal to add the contact, the, the extra contact, or make any edits to that particular record. And if I don't have that, if I don't have access to the company portal, I'll need to contact someone within your company that would have access and could do that for you. Um, so if I click on this, so just to show you, to demonstrate, 
um, there's no edit facility for all of this. So I can see everyone there, but I can't do anything with it. Um, and, but I can allocate the contractor to you know, cases and, and everything else and assets, etc. So I can do all of that normally. I just can't add or edit the record for that, co for that particular contractor. But if I go back to contractors and select, say, one that hasn't got the little icon and select this one, I can see from here that little pencils appear and I can add new contacts. I can make changes to these, this de the details here within the company information. I can also add insurances in here um, and I can see some history as well. Um, of the, of, the, of the contractor's work that they've done for the building. So that's the difference between, uh, between adding contractors and uh, from within the company portal and adding contractors from within the building portal. The advantage of adding contractors from the company portal is that if you're using the contractors, the same contractor on all your building sites, for example, then you only have to add it in once and then assign it to the different buildings. So it saves a lot of time rather than having to import or having to manually type in the same details for all your buildings. So that has an advantage. The second advantage that it has is that it enables you to manage centrally the contractors and to designate where they, where they are going to be working at. And also if you want to manage the insurances centrally, if you've got say, some type of uh, you know process within your system, uh, within your company that uh, you know you need to make sure that everyone's insured, which you know hopefully they all are, and you want to centrally manage all of that and to make sure that you're following some type of compliance uh, that your company is uh, you know built around. Um, you can centrally manage the contractors from the company portal, uh, and um, you know the, and let the building managers do less admin work. Um, in that area as well. So hopefully I've, um, I've covered off everything that I need to cover off and I thank you.